God show. Now, we're up in San Francisco. We're selling uh, MASH into syndication. And Gary Owens is up there. And they're selling this show called The Gong Show. It's in syndication. And we say, what the heck is The Gong Show? Everybody's talking about it. I had no idea what it was. So I came back to uh, L.A. afterwards. I guess it was a big seller. And uh, we kept saying, a gong show, what would that? And I remember as a kid, remember I told you, I listened to radio, and there was a show called Major Bows and the Talent uh, Hour. And Major Bows uh, used to have a little gong on his desk. And uh, people would be performing, and if he didn't particularly care for him, he'd hit that little gong. And I'm saying, oh, now I get the idea where the gong came from for the gong show. So... I, I'm watching the show, it's on at nighttime, and Gary Owens, I believe, is the host, and I see what they're doing, and I get this phone call. They said, Jamie, uh, NBC wants to do the gong show as a daytime, cross-the-board show, and uh, they'd like you to be one of the first guests on it. Uh, you, Joanne Worley, and Jack Cassidy, and uh, the host of the show is John Barber, so I said, yeah, okay, yeah, I know, it's a talent show, and yeah. So uh, we go, meet at, uh, Chuck Barris is the producer of the show, welcomes us there, and uh, they have uh, C.V. Auberg, who's the model, and uh, they have uh, uh, Milton Delug and the band, and the guys in the band, they're kind of dressed like in carnival outfits, you know, with the big white stripes and the thing. And the panel, Jack Cassidy and Joanne and I are just dressed like we are now and so forth. And uh, John Barber comes out and they welcomes everybody and he brings on the first talent. And of course, some of this, the talent that we're seeing now, these awful acts that we're doing, that they're doing, and we're trying to figure out, okay, what do we do? How do we, uh, I'm not a producer or director or I can't hire these people. I'm a fellow actor, and now I'm going to criticize these people. I, something's wrong here. And uh, they said, well, you can't do this. You can't say this. and You can't do that. And uh, uh, you have, if you don't like them, you gong them. And so the play, it wasn't really going anywhere. We couldn't do anything. And so uh, I went back to my dressing room. We had a, our dinner break, and Chuck comes back, and he says to me, he says, what's wrong with the show? And I said, well, Chuck, I said, truthfully, standards and practices says we can't do this, then you can't do that. You can't. How, many, how many times you say, okay, take singing lessons or, uh, uh, you know, go, go get your feet fixed uh, to dance. And I said, you can't, you can't uh, make comments about the individual themselves. Uh, you know, he's got a big nose. Uh, hey, you with the glasses. Uh, I said, and then obviously you're bringing on acts that are terrible. I mean, what can we do? So he said, well, what do you, I said, why don't we make it like a party? You know, like, let us have fun with they're doing something like, why can't we do the same thing? Or let's say if Joanne goes to, to gong the person and I like the person, what if I fight Joanne off? Or so he says, oh yeah, yeah. That, that's a, and I says, we, we, take the band out of the carny outfits. I said, why don't we do this? Put the band in tuxedos. Put C.B. Auberg, who's the model, in a beautiful evening gown. Have your female guests on the show, beautiful evening gown, and your celebrities in tuxedos to watch a guy crack eggs on his head. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, let's have some fun. Let's, let's just make it like a house party in that. So he says, great, yeah. So now he tried to get John Barber to do that, but John Barber never got it. He thought he was looking for the next Mario Lanza or the next Barbara Streisand or, you know, whatever it was. So finally, they convinced Chuck to take over. And that's when they, Chuck, took over. Everybody got into the tuxedos. If you notice that, they even had the little person, the midget Jerry. He was in the top hat of the tuxedo. See, he was in the band, was in the tuxedo. And they, all these ridiculous acts, you know, a guy hanging upside down by his feet playing a banjo and all these other silly things that went on. And of course, then, remember I said chemistry, again, always works. They got J.P. Morgan on, Artie Johnson, and myself. And that became that chemistry that worked, that nucleus, because we played off of one another. Uh, we'd fight, we'd, we'd do all kinds of things uh, that were absolutely silly. And the show took off. I mean, it was like the most popular show. Uh, we did a show one time. John Dorsey was the director of the show. And as you know, some of the things that Chuck used to do, he used to come out, clap his hands and point, and read the cue cards and everything else. 
So one show we did, we decided on our own. This is JP and Artie and myself. We said, you know what? I'm sick of him doing that. Let's take over the show. Let's not even tell. We said, hey, to props, you got some duct tape and some rope? They said, yeah. So the show gets started like that. Chuck starts doing whatever it is now. He doesn't know what's happening. The camera people don't know what's happening. The producer doesn't know what's happening. We run out there, we grab Chuck on, on camera and we drag him off and the camera follows us around stage and we tie him up backstage and put the duct tape on him and we take over the show. <laughs> Hardy Johnson starts doing this and JP and I in the act and, that, and they kept, they were brilliant. They kept cutting back to Chuck trying to get out of the rope so he could get back, you know, for the show. We bring the axe on and we do that. We gong, we do everything else. And there's Chuck still trying to get out of the ropes. And at the end of the show, we had to come up with a payoff. Turns out that Artie's gone mad and he's tied JP and me up. We got duct tape on and Artie closes out the show. Totally ad lib show, but they allowed us to do that. At any rate, we had did so many of those. And then we started with the little cards that we'd put out and right out in front of it. And then we started putting the dolls up on, on, the, on the stage. My wife was one of the first ones that bought one for Chuck and he started putting those up uh, on the stage. And uh, it just be, it, it got to the point though, it's a lot of times I wasn't there. I'd be on the road doing a theater, live theater, which is what I still do. And uh, JP would sometimes get out a little out of line. <laughs> sometimes, as you notice, they blipped her. She'd say some things on there. And then JP started to get a little risque. I love JP, great singer and everything else, but I tell you, you really had to rein her in. Then she started where she wanted to expose her, her uh, bosom. <laughs> so, so a lot of times what would happen, people didn't know this, uh, when I would be fighting with her and get her on the floor, it wasn't to stop her from gogging, it was stopping her from ex exposing her bosoms. <laughs> and so unfortunately, one time I wasn't there and she did do it. And oh my goodness, standards NBC, they came down on Chuck and JP. And it, even though it wasn't on the air live, it was still taped. You had an audience in there, you know, with the kids and everything else. And so, oh my goodness. A anyhow, they, they told them, you better shape up and, uh, and so forth. But I mean, they, they called me in all the time to do the gong show. And then there was the famous gong show with the Popsicle Twins. I think you remember that one. Oh my goodness. That was one... Uh, I, I was on that show, and uh, he had the two kids come out, and teenagers, uh, girls, erotically uh, having a popsicle, each one of them. And oh, you could. I went out to the East Coast, but I'm not sure what happened on the West Coast. I don't know whether they cut that out or not. <laughs> he he was he was really something else. Chuck was.